So the rest of 5-4 is just doing the homework. We did all the theory in the first part of the video. The, basically the theory is if we're given a definite integral, definite integrals calculate net areas and to calculate the net area we perform the integration, plug in the top number and the bottom number into the integrals and subtract. It's just doing the integration that could be ugly. So let me just randomly start at the beginning and skip through and try to get close, close enough to the end. It's really just integration that's going to be, be the, the cruddy part. So for problem 2 in section 5.4, I need to integrate first. How do I integrate? Well, if there's a sum or a difference, I need to use the rule that allows me to split the integral up. I don't know how to integrate polynomials, so I need to split the subtraction into two individual integrals with that sub subtraction sign between. I don't even know how to integrate when there's a coefficient, so I'm going to bring that coefficient out front using the rule that allows me to do that. And I should be keeping these numbers on, in the definite integral symbol. Now I'm ready to use the rules, uh, if I didn't write the two there that I brought out front. So for this guy that had an exponent of 1, I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and get 1 half. It had a coefficient of 2, and I'm going to multiply by 1 over the new exponent. So I'm going to multiply by 1 half. That's using the general power rule. This is the integral of a constant, and to integrate the constant, you just tack on the x to that constant. I need to simplify this and plug in both 1 and 6, 6 first and 1 second. This 2 times 1 half is just 1. This is nice, not getting a fraction is the best case. So this gives me x squared minus 5x, done with the integral. So the first part of every problem that we're going to do in this section is to perform the integration using whatever skill from 5.1 or 5.2 that's necessary. Now I'm going to do the evaluation. So now I'm going to plug in 6 and then I'm going to plug in 1. So plugging in 6, I'm going to get 6 squared minus 5 times 6. And let me tell you when I was writing my keys for this and writing the solutions manual, oh, I was making mistakes ridiculous, ridiculous number of mistakes. So I am not going to do any calculations in my head because I'm going to get it wrong. So that's what you get when you plug 6 in. Now I'm going to plug 1 in. Do 1 squared minus 5 times 1 and get negative 4. So that's the steps. I integrated, I plug the numbers in, and now I subtract. The integral is going to be found by going 6 minus negative 4 and 6 minus negative 4 is positive 10. The whole answer to this is just 10. I have the answer written where you can barely see it. You can check every one of these. If its answer is not a decimal, your calculator will check exactly. If the answer is a decimal, you can take your fraction answer and turn it into a decimal to check. So I'm going to enter the function 2x minus 5. Don't really care what my window is as long as it has 1 and 6 in the x window. And then second calc, go down to option 7, 1 for the lower limit, 6 for the upper limit, gives me 10. That has, look, it's more, it's, you can see I get a positive integral, even though there's some area beneath the x-axis, most of it's above the x-axis, that why it nets out to 10. Now, maybe that triangle has an area of 12 and that triangle has an area of 2 and it nets out to 10, I'm not sure. Um, 4 is easy, so I'm going to skip over 3 and 4 because I'm not going to do every problem, and that's an easy one. That's just the integral of a constant that, that's going to integrate to 6x. This is going to integrate to 6x. I'm going to evaluate it at 2 and 9, and it's not worth, well, it's worth our time, but I don't want to make the videos unbearably long. So I'll move on to 6. For 6, it's a polynomial. 
And remember, I need to separate uh, polynomials into multiple integrals, pull the coefficients out front before I integrate. So in six, I'm gonna rewrite this as three integrals. If I got lazy and didn't write the zero and two every time, certainly wouldn't be the end of the world. But the proper way to do it is this. This is doing it properly. A friend of mine that just retired, he would not, he would be, ugh, not loving how lax I get sometimes compared to the rigor he wants, but he more teaches engineering students. Um, so separated into three integrals, now I'll pull my coefficients out front. So I'm not ready to integrate until I get the problems in the right form. But if you're, you know, it's not, I can tell you that I sometimes skip some of these steps and still get the right answer. And if you have that level of comfort and you know workarounds, feel free, but I'm not showing any workarounds as our introduction to integration. So I've got it set up ready to integrate. This guy right here, I'm gonna add one to the exponent. The three is gonna become a four. I'm gonna multiply by one fourth. The eight stays out front. This guy after the minus sign, there's a six. The x's exponent's gonna bump up to one. It's gonna bump up to three. I'm gonna multiply by one third. And my third integral, it's a constant, so it just integrates to that constant times x. And then I put the zero and the two in. This eight over four is two, so this is gonna be two x to the fourth. This six over three is two. This is gonna be minus two x cubed. And the two x is still two x. I like to keep the numbers small. Even when I keep the numbers small, sometimes the algebra gets ridiculous. So now I'm gonna plug in two and then plug in zero. So I plug the top number in, which is gonna be two times two to the fourth minus two times two cubed plus two times two. Do that all on my calculator. I don't need to see any algebra for that. So second quit. So two times two to the fourth minus two times two cubed plus two times two. This guy comes out to 20. And then with the zero, that's gonna come out to zero. Two times zero to the fourth minus two times zero cubed plus two times zero. That I can do, that's gonna be zero. And now subtract the first number that I've gotten minus the second number. The answer to this is gonna be 20. And I have that 20 written down here, so I'm not gonna check on my calculator to save time. But you absolutely can check on your calculator. Let's just do eight, because it's super quick, and I'll show you that the answer that I want, and then to check it on my calculator. So, it's an integral of an e. It, I don't need u substitution because the exponent is x. It doesn't need u substitution, but I do need to pull that coefficient out front before I integrate. So now, I have the integral part written well because now it's just an e to the x, and e to the x integrates to e to the x. This case is gonna be two times e to the x because of the coefficient. So this integrates to two times e to the x. That's the integral. Didn't need u substitution. I only need u substitution if the exponent is like two x or x squared plus five, if it's something different than x. Now I'm gonna plug the top number in and do two times e to the fourth by plugging the top number in the bottom number in and do two times e to the zero. Anything to the zero power is one, so two times e to the zero is two times one, which is two. And I'm gonna subtract the top result, which is two e to the fourth, minus the bottom result, which is two. That I'm gonna say is the answer. Let me get a decimal for that to make sure I'm doing this right. So it's two, now second and ln for e with an exponent. My new calculator would raise that for me, but my old calculator, I need to close off a parenthesis. If I can get my new calculator to show up right now, I would show you the difference of typing on it, but hopefully by this time in calculus, you could do this just fine. Let me do this on my calculator now. 
and y equals put 2e to the x, second and ln for e with an exponent. Graph it and do second calc, second calc, go down to option 7. I do it backwards from by hand, lower limit type 0 and hit enter, upper limit type 4 and hit enter and I get exactly that number so I can check 100% of these. Even if I get an answer that's not a decimal, I prefer answers that aren't decimals, I can still check. On the test, if all you do is press buttons on your calculator and it's like a nine point question, I'll probably do minus eight. I, the calculus is more important than the number itself. Um, Ten's another good problem, specifically because it's an LN problem. We need to get good plugging LNs just in case you see them in math. 218 if you have to take it. So I'm going to rewrite number 10 with a negative exponent. These problems that have x to the first in the denominators, we rewrote those to use the ln rule that has the negative one exponent. So I can rewrite number 10 as 5x to the negative one. That allows me the freedom to pull the 5 out and make it 5 times this ugly integral, 1 to e squared of x to the negative 1 dx. That looks like a calculus problem. I mean, it looks way more impressive with the e's in the, um, on, the, on the definite integral symbol. x to the negative 1 integrates to an ln. So this is going to be 5 times the natural log of the absolute value of x evaluate it from 1 to e squared. I don't need the c's. Now I'm going to evaluate it at e squared and do 5 times the natural log of e squared. The natural log of e squared is actually 2. And then 5 times the natural log of 1, the natural log of 1 is actually 0. This piece is going to come out to 10. This piece is going to come out to 0, but let's show you. So second and quick through back to the main screen. Clear this out. 5 natural log, and then second ln e squared. This calculator forces the parentheses on me. The newer calculators show the exponent, which is much better. So there's the 10 for that piece. And now 5 times the natural log of 1. There's the 0 for that piece. The answer is just going to be the 10 minus the 0. It's going to give me 10. Absolutely can check on my calculator. Just go y equals... 5 divided by x, graph it, and then second calc, go down to option 7, do them backwards, do the lower number first, which is 1, the upper number second, which is second ln e squared, enter it, and there's my 10. Again, if this was a test question, I saw this for an answer without any accompanying work on a 10-point question. I think minus 9, it's the calculus that's going to be more important than the number. The number is just kind of for checking purposes. Um, I'm going to skip number 12. That's just another LN problem and get into a U substitution. And let's bust out one of your homework problems. I haven't done many of your homework problems. Let's do problem 13, which I won't have an answer for, but that's okay. We can check on our calculator. So let's do 13. I have to do the integral, and I have a parenthesis with an exponent. I'm going to pretend I'm not, I can't clear that parenthesis, but I could. I could clear the parenthesis and avoid u, sub, u substitution, but generally, parentheses with exponents we do with u substitution. I'm going to not write the 1 and 2 over and over again. It just gets kind of cumbersome. So let me just introduce the 1 and 2 when it's needed. So remember back from section 5.2, when we had a parenthesis with an exponent, first we'd rewrite the problem with the parentheses with the exponent first. Then we let the u be the inside of the parentheses with the exponent. So the u is going to be 3x plus 1. That allowed us to write u in place of the parentheses. In this case, it's going to be u squared times 3dx. And then I'm going to try my best to make that equal from my algebra over here. The algebra with the u is to take its derivative. The derivative of u we're going to write as du dx. 
the derivative of 3x is 3, the derivative of 1 is 0. I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. And I started skipping this in the video. That's a good habit to be in. So rather than showing this, I could have probably went directly to du as 3dx. Good thing. So that 3dx can be replaced with this single du. So that is going to turn to that because they're equal to each other. So I can rewrite this as u squared du. The numbers 1 and 2 only apply to the x's. I can't plug 1 and 2 in for the u's. I'm going to integrate. My new exponent's going to be 3. I'm using the power rule. I'm going to multiply by 1 third. And now I need to get the problem back to x's. And that u, I'm going to change to 3x plus 1. Now I can plug these numbers of 1 and 2 in for problem 13. So off to the side on my calculator, I'm going to figure out what 1 third times 3 times, this is 1 to 2, what 3 times 2 plus 1 cubed is. And then I'm going to figure out what 1 third of 3 times 1 plus 1 cubed is. And let me do both the parentheses first and then multiply by the 1 third. So first parentheses is 3 times ugh, parentheses 3 times 2 plus 1 and my parentheses cubed. So that's 343. And the second one's going to be 4. If I do 3 times 1 plus 1 cubed, it's 4 cubed, which is 64. Now I'm going to multiply 1 third times 343, making 343 over 1, and 1 third times 64, making 64 over 1. So this is going to be 343 over 3. This is going to be 64 over 3. So now I'm going to subtract 343 over 3 minus 64 over 3. And the over 3 part I don't worry about, but the 343 minus 64 I do worry about. So I get 279 over 3. And I think that actually works. Yeah, so my answer to problem 13 is 93. No reason to write a wrong answer down, so let me enter this function in my y equals and do 3 times 3x plus 1 quantity squared. I don't even need to graph it. I can go straight to second calc 7. It'll graph it for me anyways, whether I ask it to or not. And then start with the 1 first, and the 2 second gives me the 93, so I know I'm good. Um, why don't you pause the video and try 15, and I will do um, 15 in a, after you pause the video and try it, just so you have some homework problems done. I don't want to burden you with too much homework. So it's another parentheses with an exponent. So I'm going to do the u substitution to just get practiced with it. To do u substitution, if there's a parentheses with an exponent, I write that parentheses with an exponent first doesn't have to be written first, but I prefer it. And anytime I have a parenthesis with an exponent, I always have the problem set up so that you can let u be the inside of the parenthesis with the exponent. So I can rewrite this problem as the integral of u squared times 9dx. Now I need to get rid of that 9dx working with this u equals 3x plus 1. So I'm going to take the derivative. I'll show all the steps, but if you skip a step here, it's better. On the left-hand side for the derivative of u, I'm going to write du dx. On the right-hand side, the derivative of 3x is 3, the derivative of 1 is 0. I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. This is the step I started doing in my head in the last video. So I get du is 3dx. Not good enough. I have a 9dx I'm trying to replace. So I need to make a 9dx. To make a 3dx into a 9dx, I need to multiply by 3. So 
So I'm going to get 3 du equals to 9 dx. This is what I'm going to substitute. So this 3 du is going to go in place of that 9 dx. So I can rewrite this as u squared times 3 du. Can't integrate yet. I'm going to pass the 3 out front and get 3 times the integral of u squared du. This is actually better than the last problem. Add 1 to the exponent and get a u cubed. Leave the coefficient of 3 and multiply by 1 over the new exponent, which is 1 third. 3 times 1 third is 1, so those just cancel. And the integral comes out to u cubed. The numbers 1 and 2 apply to the x's and not the u's. I finish up the integration by changing the u to 3x plus 1. And the numbers I'm going to need to plug in are 1 and 2. So I'm going to figure out what 3 times 2 plus 1 cubed is and figure out what 3 times 1 plus 1 cubed is. And is that the same calculation we just did? Um, yeah, 3 times 1 plus 1 cubed is 64. We did that on the last problem. And I think this was 343. I did that same computation on the last one, but I'll do it again. 3, whoops, parentheses, parentheses, no, no, that, 3 parentheses, 3 times 2 plus 1 parentheses cubed. Oh, really? It is a different number. Maybe I had a different integrand. 3 times 2 plus 1, hmm, 1,029. I don't I guess it's not the same number. It kind of perplexes me. Maybe that's after I divide it by 3. Who knows? I don't remember. So anyways, if I did this right, it's going to be 1,029 minus 64. There's a chance that I'm just not seeing my mistake. So I'm going to check this to make sure I match up. If I don't get 965 on my calculator, I'm like, ugh. But I can check it. It means I have a mistake somewhere. I feel like I have a mistake somewhere, but I don't know what it is. So let me change this function to 9 times 3x plus 1 squared, and then second calc, option 7, lower limit 1, upper limit 2, 279. So I have a mistake, and it's somewhere, I think, here. I think this is supposed to be 3. If this was 343, is 343 minus 64 equal? It, yes. This is supposed to be 343. So I made a mistake entering this on my calculator. Who knows what I did? Let me try again. So this is going to be 3 times 2 plus 1 quantity cubed. I don't know what I entered wrong, but I entered something wrong. So this is really, this is why it's so nice to have this safety net. This is supposed to be 343 minus 64, and my answer should be 279. So it's so easy to fix our mistakes that there's no reason to make a mistake unless you just don't know how to integrate. Um, there's only a few more problems. Let's maybe do two more. Uh, let's do 20, I think. It's, I'll do 20 and 22 and then call it the end of this section. Maybe there's actually three more, but um, we'll do this. Yeah, we'll do, how about 20 and 24? So 20 is a parentheses with an exponent. Parentheses with exponents, I integrate all with u substitution unless I want to do the multiplication and clear the parentheses I actually could but I don't want to so I wrote the parentheses with the exponent first and I always when I have a parentheses with an exponent and I'm integrating do u substitution and I always let u be the inside of the parentheses with the exponent that will allow me to write this. Notice I already dropped the negative 2 and the 1. Uh, I'm not going to pull them back to the end. So that allows me to rewrite this like that. Let me do lazy integral. So this is going to be du, and I'm going to do the dx multiplication, jam it over on the right-hand side rather than showing it the shortcut that I was doing at the end of section 5-2. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Put it inside a parenthesis because they both 
the whole result of the derivative needs to be multiplied by dx. The derivative of minus 4x is minus 4. The derivative of 1 is 0. Trying to get rid of a 6x minus 12, well, 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times 3 is 12. I need to multiply both sides by 3. If I multiply the left side by 3, I get 3 du. And then if I multiply the right side by 3, I can distribute it and do 3 times 2x, which is 6x, 3 times minus 4, which is minus 12, dx. So now I have this, this 6x minus 12 dx, I'm going to change it to 3 du. So I can rewrite this as the integral. Keep the u squared, but change the 6x minus 12 dx to 3 du. Move the 3 out front, and now I can use the power rule. Add 1 to the exponent and get a new exponent of 3. Multiply by 1 over that new exponent, which is 1 over 3. Still have the coefficient. These cancel out to be 1s, so the integral comes out just to a lonely u cubed. Need to change the u back to x squared minus 4x plus 1. Still have the cubed. I need to plug in both negative 2 and positive 1. Off to the side, I'm going to figure out what negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 plus 1 quantity cubed is. I'm going to do a little of this by hand because that's hard for me to enter. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8 plus 1 is plus 1. Oh my gosh. This one's going to come out to 13 cubed. Yeah. 13, 13 cubed. It comes out to 2197. And then do the same thing with the... Whoops, I did it backwards. I'm supposed to do the 1 first. It's okay. Let me do the 1 first properly. So I, I was so freaked out by that negative 2 that I did it out of order. I should do 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 1 cubed. This is going to be 1 minus 4 plus 1. I think this comes out to negative 8. Uh, real quickly, let me do the inside of the parentheses, which is 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 1. The inside of the parentheses comes out to negative 2. And then if I cube negative 2, I get negative 8. So my integral is going to be negative 8, which is what I get from the 1, minus 2197, which I get from the 2. So um, negative 8 minus 2197, and I get negative 2205. I could check this on my calculator, but I did it ahead of time. I have the answer written at the bottom of the screen so I know this is correct, so I'm not going to check it. So one last problem. I'm going to jump all the way down to the last problem. 24 is the last problem in this section. I'm skipping a couple, but we did, you know, we did some problems in the first video that weren't from the section, so hopefully I did enough. This is an E problem, definite integral. When I have an E and the exponent isn't just a single X, I rewrite the problem with the E first. And in an E problem, I always let U be the exponent of the E. So I can rewrite this problem as the integral of E to the U times 8x dx. It's the 8x dx that I need to change by taking the derivative. I'm going to lazy derivative this, and I'm going to say du. The derivative of x squared is 2x. I'm going to say it's 2x dx by skipping the multiplying by dx and doing that in my head. This 2 needs to be an 8. To get that 2 to be an 8, I multiply both sides by 4, and I get 4 du equals 8x dx. So that 8x dx, I'm going to change to a 4 du. And again, you can start skipping some steps here if you get comfortable and know that you can get the right answer with skipping steps. I skip them all the time, but I make a lot of mistakes too. Now I'm going to pass that 4 through the integral. 
And now e is just its own integral. So this is just going to integrate to e to the u times that coefficient of 4. I need to change the u back to x squared. So I get 4 times e to the x squared. And I need to evaluate it at both 0 and 1. So off to the side, I'm going to do 4 times e to the 1 squared and 4 times e to the 0 squared. The first piece, the 1 squared in the exponent is 1, so that's 4e to the first. That's just 4e. The second term, the exponent of 0 squared turns into 0, so that's 4 times e to the 0. And e to the 0 power is equal to 1, so that's 4 times 1, which is just 4. For an answer, I'm going to write 4e minus 4. That's what I want on the test. If you don't do any algebra and give me a decimal answer, it's minus almost all the points. So let me get a decimal for this. So 4 second divide for e minus 4. So calculator check. I'm trying to get 6.873 and some more junk. I don't care about the more junk. Let me check on my calculator. Clear it out. Do 8x second ln for e and then x squared. Again, on my older calculator here, you enter it slightly differently than on my new calculator. That's the function. I don't need to graph it. I can go second trace, go down to 7. It's going to graph it for me, so I save a step by skipping that. Calculator does it backwards. I need to plug the 0 in first and the 1 in second. So lower limit, type in 0, followed by enter. Upper limit, type 1, followed by enter. See that 6.873, so I know my answer feels good. Um, so that's as much as I'm going to do in the section. I'd like you to do all the odd problems just to get real good and practiced at this. We just have two more sections other than the practice test for the entire semester. And in the very last section, just because it's the last section, we're going to do we're going to do all the theory by hand to set the problems up, and we're going to do the integration on our calculators. So that um, really we just have one more section of algebra, and it's, it's not really anything new. If you can do these definite integrals, it's just more definite integrals.